Kurt, go to um, the computer screen. Okay. And we're going to, got about five seconds here. And we're off. <coughs> Record. He's doing us what the Baptists do to him. And that's fine. The Baptists are not in fellowship with me. Yeah. Well, not we aren't either, Kirk, according to you. They're not believers. I am doing you different than the Baptists. So, and, and you can liken it to whatever you are to. I just said, if I had the power of the Paul head, I'd strike both of you blind because that's what the best Baptists are. Boy. Boy. So you studied this thing out and you've already come to that conclusion. And I've already come to the conclusion 
already with both of y'all, and I'm out of fellowship with you. Y'all are in fellowship with another group, and that's, you know, I'm happy with that. You did that I'm before. Happy. Listen, that's that's right. you did that before that's anything right. was known about anything. You said, yes, you did. You you texted me. First of all, okay, now I'm not having this discussion. You guys can take off. You, you, don't, want, you, don't, you don't want to discuss what's listen, happening, how this has gone down. You think I don't know how all this goes? I know how this goes. Uh -huh. I, you've got, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time, and I'm basically going to call the police and say, we've got two guys up here. Oh, Johnny. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, listen, I'm that's it. Listen, I told you I don't want to have anything to do with it. If he's going to call the law on us, just, just, like, like, just, the church. Just, like, just like they did to Micah. I, Nothing we're, we're here to discuss openly and further with the church. Why you hear compares to any Save our soul. Save our soul. We love you. I, I tell us where we're wrong. So I basically said, if I was Paul, I would strike you blind. Now you tell Paul. We're here with a repent of attitude. Hit the road. We're here with a repent of attitude. Hold it. Come on, buddy. He's going to call the law. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Come on. Hold it. Is my, I'm going to say this, but then I'm going to go. Come oh, on, brother. And I have... We've, we've had disagreements over the years, but we've always been able to talk. Yes, we did. Yes, we had. He's not interested, hold on. I'm not interested in y'all at all. Y'all basically. Let's go. You told me to give you a nudge. Let's well, go. I'll tell you what, brother. It's, I, it's on him. I, I think you know. I think you know that these things are true. That's right. I think you're both. You can't answer half the scriptures. Okay. You fine. can't answer half. That's fine. Let's go, hold on. Tell, tell me about the kingdom in Luke 24 30. Well, no, no, no. Come on. 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 You tell me where the kingdom is in Luke 21, 31. I wish you would, please. I'm asking your, your, your dad a question, and you can answer the question as well. When you hear a bit of attitude, I, I would say today, I would say this for me wrong. I'll hug your neck. No, let me go, let me go from, I'm going to ask a Bible question. And, and the thing is, over, we're already at the point where we've gone through this with y'all, and we've decided that we're done. You haven't gone through anything. That's, That's right. You, you brought me on Facebook, you already admitted it. Keep moving. You wouldn't talk to me about it. Right, admit it. Just saying, All right. Admit it. We got it, Hulk. We'll put, we'll put him on his old TV station. Uh, just a sec. Don't Let's go. go. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to go. And I'm not going to answer your questions, Hulk. I'm, I'm going to show you how me. foolish you are. That's fine. In Luke 21, 31. You listen. Listen. The foolishness in Luke 21. Oh, you don't want to listen to the scripture? No, I have scripture. You don't scriptures. want to listen to the scripture? I have scripture. You, have scripture. you, you have don't have scripture. That scripture. That it's foolish to fool with you guys. After having us at your tent meeting and after having us on your television program, it's now we're not to be fooled with. Y'all are with the denominational guy. No, we ain't. Yeah. No, we ain't. You it's know what we're talking about. Talking about. We're That's suicide. Prove it. Prove it. We all saw your stuff on Facebook. So? Yeah. And, I'm, I'm here with a repent of attitude. Prove me wrong. And I know, I know who uh, Preston is. I know he doesn't even associate with the Lord's Church anymore. I've got him on Facebook or on the internet right here on my computer where he's laughing at the Church of Christ, and that's where y'all are. So I don't have any reason to discuss with you. So first, of all, first of all, Preston and Bell, they converted two Pentecostal churches out of Pentecostalism. Secondly, because they have been categorically withdrawn from, because they preach the truth on eschatology, they see churches of Christ are very traditional in their views. And as a matter of fact, concerning eschatology, we are denominational, and so are you. You can't answer. That's exactly right. Okay. Might I answer the question? You think nobody needs, on your face? Nobody needs to answer y'all. No, well, we don't. No, we don't. Because they can't, hold it. We, we got it. Let's go, buddy. God, 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 God said first Peter no, 3 15 didn't. to give an answer. He didn't tell us to give an answer after we have already done it. How do you answer? We have done it. Have you ever answered? I'm not sure as a brother. John, you haven't answered. We come down here as a brother. In my, in my estimation, I know you strapped me down. How you dealt with me? And I'm satisfied yeah. that you're... He blocked us. That's how he dealt with us. What happened He blocked us. us. That's how he dealt All right with me until it came public. And he already admitted he blocked us. He used, he used, he used me in a meeting until it came public. That's exactly what you did. That's your opinion. And then you texted me the and same thing to my brother. I am fine with the fact that y'all are now with denominations and I don't have... Uh, you don't even have to talk. That's fine. You can say that. And when you put your video up, that's right. You've got your... That's exactly right. Would you let me go for a moment? I don't want to. Let me go for a moment. Just, we, first of all, one minute. Is you going to call the law on this right now? I'm going to eventually. Have all right, that's fine. He, he, he. I'm going to say this. Our Lord said, Patrick, you can't answer. You have no concept of your doctrine. In Luke 21, 31, when you should see these things come to pass, know ye the kingdom of God is all nigh. The, and all, the, all the time, we have two denominational guys in here. Oh, a bunch of people. They're, they have left that the you had us, uh, your, 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 you, you once told me I was the most faithful man you ever met in your life. Y'all left the Lord's church. What did he say about you, Herbert? You're a powerhouse for the Lord? 
Last year, a year ago. You were at my house a year ago. It's been a night, my house. I want I want you to answer the scripture. I, want I don't want you to just answer the scripture. scripture. You can't. I, you know what, Robert? Just because you bring your agenda up at this particular time is just. Oh, of course not. Of course not. And when Michael goes to a Baptist church and he has his agenda at a particular time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Right. And yeah, that's exactly right. It's, that's so, it. So, now, you can move along. Y'all can go on with your Preston business. All right, let's go. We are fine with where y'all are. Evidently, you're that's justified. Hold on, we got it. That brother. justifies you in your mind because you haven't even investigated. We've got it, Harvard. Come on, bud. Let's go. That's that's a shame. But it is what it is. You can't sit down with me with your Bible. It is what it is. Deal with the truth of God's word. To because I basically have determined. You can't you. even answer. John. I've determined where you are. Oh, have you? And, and, and not I'm scripturally. When you don't understand, not scripturally. You don't have a comprehend. You don't have even a comprehension of the teaching of God's word. I'm fine with it. Right. He he loves you so much. He won't even discuss it with you. He'll block you on Facebook though. Come on, let's go. It is what it is, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on. Let's go. We we'll pray for 48 to repent, Johnny. At least don't come up and talk with us. You know, we come down here as friends. No, you do. Oh, that's not true. Come on, friends. Y'all need to keep moving. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. I'm coming, Joe. No. Hold her. Hold her. I want the record. I have challenged you to debate. You can debate at any time. I will debate you any time Over. on the second coming of Christ. You have no Over. concept of it. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll we'll see. I'll life. tell you what. We're, we've got a few people converted. And it's, it, it, that, 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 ties, that ties four uh, individuals in the last month and a half. They agreed with eschatology. We've got preachers calling us all over the brotherhood. So don't say that. You're not a force. Oh, well, fine. Only Johnny's. He's the only force. At least for now. Kurt, you ready? Put it on uh, both of us. Is that C? Put it on C, buddy. All right. Well, there you go. That's the video of uh, our visit. We drove over. We drove. I drove over 800 miles, and it was 700 for you. I I, I live further north than you do. We drove out down there, uh, hoping to have a conversation with Johnny Robertson and. Uh, we had a conversation on the way down there, and uh, I, I, do, you, do you want to go through and explain how that whole thing uh, evolved and yeah. how it developed? Well, first of all, there was a man, who, a uh, young man, who was attending with one of the congregations that Johnny uh, is affiliated with, who had great concern over this issue of eschatology. That's right. Now, let me clarify that for a minute. This man, who, who put out some legal technicality, uh, from WGSR. He's a preacher with the Church of Christ. Johnny Robertson's cousin is one of his best friends. Mm -hmm. He has a television program Thursday night at 8 p.m., uh, of which we can't mention his name because of some legal technicality with the television station. Yeah, but he everybody said here, he, he made sure that we yeah. would not call his name yeah. in this program. Well, isn't that ridiculous? Isn't at, that least, at least Johnny lets us, he doesn't have a problem with us calling his name. Yeah. Well, so we thank him for that. <laughs> hey, let's, let's own up and let's. If we can't even, I wouldn't say anything if I was ashamed to say it, and if I, if I was a friend, yeah. put my name to it. Yeah. It's silly. But anyways, I'm sorry. So we go on. There's so a young man in his congregation. young man in his congregation that was concerned over the issue of eschatology. He said he was seeing what we were teaching, and he was the one that told us that this preacher was having class on eschatology on Thursday nights. And so we debated back and forth, Steve and I, whether or not we would uh, contact this man, this young man, to let him know that we were coming. We decided not to contact him, lest he be confronted by this preacher and somehow put on the spot. So we decided to go down to try to help him and help uh, the congregation see the truth on eschatology. After all, their Bible classes are public. Now when we got to Martinsville, I decided that it might be good to go visit Brother Johnny Robertson. And uh, I have been good friends with Johnny for over 20 years. And uh, Steve uh, cautioned me, and especially his wife, That's that right. she thought that Johnny would call the law on us um, if we went down to his office and we wanted to talk to him about the Bible. And I kind of laughed at that, you remember? Yeah. And I yeah. said Johnny Robertson would never call the law on us if I'm going to go down to talk to him about the Bible. I was sort of in the middle. I thought it was 50-50. I thought he might, but I sort of thought he might not. And I, 
Now you've been friends with them for over 20 years. Yes. You've done missionary work with them. Right. You've worked together. You've fought together. You've cried together. Your children played together. Right. If he would talk with anybody, surely it would be Holger yes. Neubauer, yes. a man that he has trusted and, and called for for uh, opinions. And, and, and he, he, here's, the, here's the shame of the whole matter. That before I taught publicly what I believe, and this has been a journey for me. It hasn't been an easy thing to go against my brothers. I had no desire to cause division, no desire uh, to find something that my brothers hadn't found. I had no desire to do anything but to find God's will. But now, as I was studying some of these things, and I was discussing with Brother Johnny, he was agreeing with me. Privately, he was agreeing with me, and he actually cautioned me and said, uh, just don't teach these things publicly. And he wanted me at the same time to work with him in a meeting in, in Kentucky. And yet, when I decided that my convictions had to be taught, at that point, he would no longer have any fellowship with me. Now, he was willing to fellowship with me two weeks before. He was willing to allow me to come and work with him in a meeting in Kentucky. But after this was public, he suggests that this is a false doctrine. He can't have any fellowship with me. Now, he said, uh, Steve, right. that he answered us, that he's already dealt with us. I want it to be known on the record, Johnny Robertson did not present one argument to refute what I believe, what we believe about the second coming right. of Christ, that in fact it was imminent in the first century, and that we believe that Jesus came within that generation as he promised. And there's only one second coming, not two second comings. That's exactly right. We believe that. And so Johnny Robertson agreed with me far more than disagreed. And though he is willing to sever fellowship with me and with you, yes. he agrees with us far more than he does with brethren. At least in private. Yeah, at least in private. Far more with brethren that he's in fellowship with right. that he would disagree with. Right. For instance, he called us Hymenaeus and Philius. Right. Okay. Yes, he did. And, and that's a citation it. from 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18, and that's a standard argument that brethren have used. As a matter of fact, this is what every denomination would use as well. Sure. They would point to Hymenaeus and Philetus in 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18, and how they said that the resurrection was passed already. Now, I pointed out to Johnny, if the common view of the church was that the resurrection took place at the end of human history and at the end of the planet, they could not have influenced anyone. And he said, that's right. Now, Johnny Robertson agreed with me in one of the most fundamental passages concerning the resurrection. Hymenaeus in Philetus said that the resurrection was passed already when Jesus said the resurrection would take place when Jerusalem fell, proven by Matthew 24, 31, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. Now, Johnny Robertson agreed with me in 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18. But if he agrees with me in 2 Timothy 2, 17 and 18, then he gives up the fundamental argument right. of the traditional position concerning eschatology. Right. Now he saw this. Now he calls us Hymenaeus and Philetus right. because He's saying we're guilty of the same heresy that they're guilty and of. And we go down to talk to him as friends, as friends, knowing full well he's in agreement at least with some of these passages, knowing sure. he takes all the book of Revelation as the early date. That's right. He, he will even openly admit that. Mm -hmm. And then he's, he's, he's with you on Hymenaeus and Philetus. Wasn't he with you on Hebrews chapter 9, yes, verse 28 as yes. well? As we were discussing, now, if his supporters knew that he actually took this position on these passages, they would know that they would have great, great, great concern and disagreement with him uh, concerning these issues of eschatology. Now, Johnny uh, knows he needs to be consistent with Hebrews 9 and Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 37, we have reference to the second coming of Christ. As the Hebrew writer is writing, he says in verse 37, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. And so actually in the original language, it's more pronounced. It's Hosan, Hosan, Mekron. Literally, yet a very, very little while, Jesus was coming. A very, very short time. That's right. And so I asked Johnny, what coming is this? Of course, he said this is the coming in Jerusalem. That was the coming that was very, very, very near. Now back up in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. 
the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now in the original language, the Greek word ingus is here. It's the same phrase translated in Matthew 4, 17, the kingdom of God uh, is at hand. Repent ye for the kingdom is at hand. And so now the day that was approaching, the day had drawn near, the day was at hand. What day was at hand when the Hebrew writer wrote? Well, of course, it was the great judgment day that God would make himself known as Jerusalem would fall. The one he was coming in a very, very short time, and he wasn't going to delay Absolutely. that coming? That has to be that coming. Now, as Johnny and I were talking in Hebrews 9 and verse 28, he knew that he had a problem here for consistency. So I pointed out that Christ was going to appear a second time without sin unto salvation. And Johnny Robertson said, that's the destruction of Jerusalem. Well, that's our position. Right. When we right. argue that position, we are called right. heretics because here is the second right. coming. Right. He's coming again for salvation. Let me say this a little bit about Hebrews 9.28. We'll go sure. back to what Johnny is yeah. saying. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's you see, that. the traditional position in Churches of Christ is that salvation is complete at Pentecost. Well, here we find that Jesus was appearing a second time without sin unto salvation. Therefore, we know that salvation was not complete. This That's is not exactly. physical salvation. 1 Peter 1 5. That Peter salvation was, would be ready to be revealed in the last time. We're looking for it. The last time, That's right. the last hours where salvation was being revealed. That's right. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 10, John would say, And now comes salvation, strength, and the kingdom, that which began on Pentecost, the church, would be completed when Jerusalem fell, the kingdom, the church. Now in Churches of Christ, our position is that the church is the kingdom, the kingdom is the church. But in the traditional position, they can't be consistent in their argumentation. They weave in and out of kingdom terminology. Right. We're consistent right. with terminology. Now this is the verse that I asked Brother Johnny Robertson to answer when I came to his office, I asked him about Luke chapter 21 and verse 31. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, know ye the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Now, the traditional position says that the kingdom is complete at Pentecost. Therefore, the church which is the kingdom, the kingdom which is the church, in Luke 21, 31, that can't have reference to the church. It can't have reference to the church by the traditional position. By the traditional position, but watch this though. When you see all these things come to pass, then know that the kingdom thereof is nigh at hand. That's right. What were the things that had to come to pass before the kingdom came? Jerusalem would be encompassed with armies, verse 20. That's the right. times of the Gentiles had to be fulfilled, verse 24. We've got uh, Jesus coming in the clouds, verse uh, 27. That's right. We've got redemption coming, verse 28. And then when we get to verse 31, the kingdom was still in future retrospect, knowing Right. after those things come to pass but the church of Christ position has always been the traditional view is that it came in its completeness and its fullness on the day of Pentecost and that is not what Jesus taught no. that is not and Johnny knows he can't answer it and neither can any of the other preachers that we've been trying to get to have a right. public debate they're sweeping this under the rug they're not telling the people in the congregations the whole truth about this matter and they're actually making Jesus as a liar when no. it comes right down no. to it now, one of the things that we have as an issue with our brother John, and as a matter of fact, on eschatology, to tell you the truth, I have learned a great deal over the last few years. So has Brother Steve. Yes. Anyone who studies the book of Revelation learns a great deal, what they didn't previously know. All we're saying is that this information that we're studying, that we're coming to the knowledge of, ought to be studied with our brothers. Right. He was willing to study with us right. until we right. said this. Matter of fact, I don't think, if we said we believe that the Pope should be worshipped, I don't think we would have been treated no. like no, we were treated right. on this issue. Now, Holger, here's one thing that really gets me. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to play that video in just a moment, and I'm, we're going to walk through it 
We're going to discuss a little bit more in detail about how that whole thing went down. But right. this is one of the things that irks me. Johnny was talking to you in private, agreeing with you in private. That's right. Then when you finally said, you know, I can't keep this secret. This is absolute truth. I've got to start teaching. And to be fair, we're talking about just a couple of weeks, a week and a half. A short period of time. Yes, where, where I was coming. Okay. Now, he was all right with me. Yeah. All right. And yeah. he actually urged me. Not to teach it, but simply demonstrate my Bible knowledge from time to time and on this in subject. In the middle of that time, he recommended you for a meeting? Yes, I was going to work with him or work uh, with some uh, of the folks. Folks closely yeah, with him yeah. Yes, in, in Kentucky. So, so, so now, we, we go down there. We, Holger, longtime friends. I've known Johnny for well past 10 years. Last year, he spent several nights in my house. I was helping him. He called me one of the most faithful men he's ever known. But at any rate... We go down there, drove 800 miles one way to talk to him. I told him we came down as friends. You did not. He denounced it. All that other stuff. We left. Before we got home, Holger, he had posted his video of this account right. on Facebook. Right. Everybody's heralding Johnny Robertson as the champion for how he dealt with... The only thing he did is call us names. He did That's right. He called us false teachers, and he blocked us on Facebook, and he yeah. called the law. And okay. then, well, he threatened to call the law. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he threatened, threatened to call the law. law. You're correct. Yeah. All right. If you don't leave, I'm going to call the police. Right. All right. So, right. so, but now get this. Everybody's championing him because he wouldn't talk with us. He wouldn't deal with us. What's Johnny doing in private? Texting Holger Neubauer. Yeah. Tell him the fact. Was he not giving you advice to help you? Um, it, don't buy that TV time. Oh, because well, nobody tell you about that. that. This, this, is, this is almost unbelievable. Johnny Robertson told me, now he wouldn't talk to me there because he's dealt with me as a withdrawn from brother. That's his argument, okay? But we ended up talking on the phone to each other. We were cordial with each other. I don't hate Johnny. I love him as a brother. As a matter of fact, he's inspired me uh, to do the evangelistic work that I'm doing right now. And I'm persevering, basically. I'm going on. Uh, I don't need any uh, outside support to do my work. We baptized five in just a, uh, about th three months right now. He's inspired me to do the work that I am doing now. So I love the brother. However, Johnny is very inconsistent on this matter. He told me on the phone that this hour of TV was not watched. He said, no one watches that Do hour. yourself a favor. That's it, yeah. He said, don't buy that. No one watches that hour. Thank you for the help, brother. But the thing is, he bought the next week the very hour that he told me not no buy. one watches. Yeah. We, because we were going to buy that out. That's right. That's correct. We would have been on last month last, in April. Yeah, yeah, right. But Johnny bought the hour we wanted while we were uh, working it out the details with Charles. Now, why would he do that? Well, I, I think it's because he tried keeping us off. Yeah, we don't. You know, we can't judge on. motives. Right. I don't know I why, why he did opinion. that. I, I don't know why he did that. But it just seems so very inconsistent. Yeah. Let me just say this: yeah. it's very un Johnny Robertson like. Right. To call the law on a good friend. To suggest that blocking on Facebook is tantamount to withdrawal. By the way, he thought he blocked me. And he did. I, I responded to him and immediately deleted it, and then he blocked me. So sure. if withdrawal is blocking, he didn't uh, withdraw from me when he, when he thought that he did. So if you've got to block someone on Facebook, and that's not what's wrong anyway. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, now we've got to figure out Facebook yeah. in the equation. You know, and my my problem is, is that when we went down, and I would sit down, I had no idea that my brother Johnny Robertson would threaten the law on me. I, I, I cannot fathom that. I cannot fathom that. All we wanted that. to do is yeah. sit down and study. Now, everybody who's watching this program, everybody who's watching this broadcast. You know uh, for sure Johnny will throw down in, in a heartbeat about anything religious, anything to do with yeah. the Bible. He's ready to go to take you to task right at this moment. We were, we were simply asking him to sit down right. and reason with us. Come, let us reason We wanted together. him. I thought that and Johnny Robertson would probably agree with our position eventually. Eventually. I, and I, and I he should. He and he still may. Yeah, and, and I thought that I he would. I right for him. Because he's a reasonable man. Well, he, generally, he generally... He used to be. Well... Except for this position, he had, lately. he had been reasonable, and so I thought he would be coming around because his positions are far closer yes. to our position. Now, he said that he has taken, in Churches of Christ, this is kind of a minority view, that he has taken Wallace's view and the camp view on the book of Revelation. He said that's his view, okay? That's our view. We believe right. in the early date of the book of Revelation. But let me say this, once you understand the book of Revelation, yeah. 
it's a few steps to understand the truth because the book of Revelation is about the revealing of Christ. And we're going to get into okay. that. Let, let's let's go back. All right. Let's have it, let's go through this video one more time because I think people want to see this video a uh, second time. Let me explain a little bit too here. Okay. Right. Um, I will agree that I was set, but okay. in Mark chapter three and verse five, Jesus looked round about them with anger. I will agree at this point that I rebuked sharply. But in Titus 1.13, the Bible says, rebuke them sharply that they might be sound yeah. in the faith. I was totally taken off guard when Brother Johnny Robertson said, if you all don't leave, I'm going to call the law on you. I had no idea yeah, we'll get that whatsoever. No idea. As a matter of fact, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe Johnny Robertson would call the law on me. And he right. said, I've already dealt with you all. Right. Let me put, let me put the record on here. Brother Johnny Robertson agreed with me far more than he ever disagreed. Let me say this. He never framed one argument. When I came out and I taught this publicly, Nor with me. he never framed one argument to refute what I was believing. All he said was, uh, Satan has taken my brother. He texted me and said, Satan has taken my brother. When in fact, two weeks earlier, he was just fine with me. Yeah. So, it was just the uh, shock of it all that Brother Johnny Robertson would call the law yeah. On me. And we, we did an interview with Charles Work about this program that's coming out tonight. Didn't Johnny text you and say thank you for mentioning him 20 times? You mentioned his name like yes. 20 times or something? Yes. And, yes. Then, and then he said, I uh, mentioned the debate I've got coming up with a Muslim. Right. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk. In fact, we're going to show how the Muslim can defeat Johnny very easily with his traditional view on this. Uh, Lord willing, time providing. Let's go through this over. I think, the, And then we're going to open up the phone lines. Mm -hmm. i, I got to call my cell phone. People are watching it. They want us to get to the phone calls. They want us to get a little bit more. Let, let's watch this video, and I want to go through and, and, and show everybody how this thing went down. Kurt, go, go to the TV screen. At this point now, I, I want to explain. Uh, what had happened when we first got there, Hoger had to use the men's room. He was in there for a few minutes. Johnny wouldn't even look at me. He wouldn't even acknowledge me. Y'all saw that. I'm waiting for Hoger to come out. I thought, well, Hoger's known Johnny longer than I have. I'll wait for you to come out. Yeah. I did, and here's and here's where we pick up Johnny uh, right now. Knocked on the door. Can we come in? How you feeling? Well, I hope we can't be. No, we can't. Well, can you stop right now? Yep. Now, he's decided, Johnny Roberts has decided we can't be friends without him framing one argument to try to save his brother. Yeah. Don't he, be had, now. he hasn't given me one argument. He didn't say, Holger, I want you to consider these things because it's false. All he warned me of, he says, do you know what's fixing to happen, Holger, when you teach this thing publicly? See, he knows what side his his bread is buttered on. That's exactly he what He knows I full well that the brotherhood, the way that it is formed and the powers that be, will not tolerate this truth. And he's got and to rely on it is a them. truth. Yeah, absolutely. He's That's got to rely on where he gets the support. Exactly. And so he has to distance himself immediately. As a matter of fact, one brother I know that called him and said, we can't be with Holger. And he said, I'm not with Holger. See, Johnny could switch me off just like that because... To him, this issue, though I think he believes it in his heart, he thinks somehow it's a hobby. He's accused me of writing a hobby. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't call the book of Revelation a hobby. I don't call the great second coming of Christ a hobby. I would admonish Brother John Robertson to get up at least on the saddle and ride a little bit so he could understand what we were saying. Amen. Amen. The book of Revelation is the first step where I began to understand that the second and final coming of Christ took place within the framework of the first century. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. And by okay. the way, I do want to say this. Right. It is the obligation, the obligation of any preacher to try to save anyone's soul. Holger and I went down there. If Johnny really thought what we were in a soul-condemned state, it's his obligation to try to pull us out of that Pulls out of the fire. fire. That's right. out of the fire. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to go to some passages to show that. Uh, Galatians 6 1, uh, James 5, 19 and 20. Uh, Hope. Yeah, Jude 22, 23. There you go. All right. Now, let's continue. So, Holger, he's cordial, knocks on the door. Brother, how you feeling? Uh, let's have a conversation. Johnny's like, no, we're, we're past that point, Holger. If I had the power to call ahead, I'd strike you two blind right now. So he, he wants, if I had the power, I'm gonna, I'd strike you two blind. Mm -hmm. Man, instead of saying, brethren, 
Let's let me, sit down and let talk. me put forth an argument yeah, let's so see that you thing. can see the truth. But no, because I know where you guys are. I've determined where you guys are. And by the way, what he's arguing here is that we had a fellow on the program that he thought had left the church. And all Don Preston left was left the traditional church. He right. still, right. every time Brother Don told us when he was with um, the Baptist, he always told them about baptism for the remission of sins. Well, when you when you're with Baptists, that's what you should say. Right. You're baptized right. for now, the remission of sins. This is unverified, but I've heard he has less than 30 people. John Robertson has less than 30 people in his congregation right now. And I believe it's because of this attitude of not caring about people being in an unsaved position, unsaved state. Well, not that not could helping be. them. That could be. Not. I mean, how can he be baptized and converting and claiming and showing the whole and telling the whole world he's having all these conversions? He's got a small little congregation, less than thirty. And that's what I've heard. I I got that from a fairly reliable source. At least I thought it was at the time. You know. But well, I know one time when they first split off, they were. I know they were numbering about 70, 60 to seventy. I, I know that's the case. And so if they've gone down to thirty, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's um, what I've heard. Uh, but at any rate, at any rate. He, changed, he claims to be the great champion, the great converter, and, and yet he's had all these conversions and he won't even help you and I. Yeah. Well, um, that's what I, was num what I was very disappointed about. I was disappointed that Brother Johnny would call the law and said that I've already dealt with you. What he dealt with us, he's concluded, because we're in fellowship, he, he says, from his view, with a fellow that left the Church of Christ that we are heretics. Now, he had a fellow to come down to work with him by the name of Brad Herrick that had recently been at Freed Hardeman. He had been to different places in the church which, yes, which many liberals would, would fellowship. Yes. Now his view was we're trying to help this fellow. Right. I said on our program we're trying to pull Don back this way. We help love him. Help him. And, yeah. he's, and he's holding the truth. And if we can have an open discussion and we can have open debate What's wrong with that? No, that should be what we're all about, if we're going right. to be honest, right? And as long as we have open, forthright discussions, I don't see how that is harmful. As a matter of fact, if we get to the point that we can't have any discussion right. with a brother on any subject, we're doomed. Yeah, we are doomed. It's, it's, we can't grow. Can you imagine us God setting up a system like that? It's ridiculous. It, it is, uh, it's and ridiculous. it's certainly unscriptural. Let, let's get back to this. Uh, Kurt, hit the, hit the computer screen. Why do you think that I'm actually going to come? Because I don't have a discussion. You're not going to discuss? No, I'm basically in a position where... Um, You're satisfied with your Bible moms on this I'm subject? I'm very satisfied with my Bible moms on this subject. Is that right? And you guys come down here don't think you can force me into anything. No, not force me into anything. No, you're not. Brother? No, we're not at that stage, are we? Oh, well, stop right there. Yeah, that's right. All right. I call him brother. The Bible says, count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. That's right. But he sees somehow that he, I'm no longer his brother. He can't call me brother anymore. But well, he calls us denominational. Yeah, he, yeah. By the way, make up his mind. By the way he's, he's there's those. a couple of very liberal brethren that we have in Church of Christ. One is Rubel Shelley, another is Max Licato. Yes. Now, I doubt if Max Licato and Rubel Shelley had come down to his office that he would have said, I'm going to call law on you guys. He oh. would have set them down and he yeah. would have said, now let me tell you exactly what I believe the Bible. Right. As a matter of fact, he would have defended the truth. He would have defended yes. what he believed he to be the truth. And, and Isn't it interesting when it comes to eschatology, which is a vast subject, it's a very unifying subject, it takes some time to study and some right. effort to put into right. the Word of God. Right. Why is it, why is it that on this particular matter, he doesn't have to answer me? He doesn't have to give a Bible answer. All he has to do is say, I'm going to threaten to call the law on you. Then I'm going to call the police. And uh, I've already dealt with you all when he knows that he has it. Now we want, we want the congregations there in uh, Martinsville and Collinsville and the people in Virginia to hear Daniel what, Eden. Yeah, D Daniel Eden. Uh, to hear what the Bible teaches on this matter. Right. And in fact, we, we would wish that Johnny would have a, a good discussion with us when it comes to And I've got to say this, Holger. Now, now, we believe the plan of salvation, the same as Johnny Robertson believes it. You've got to hear, repent, confess, and be baptized in water for the remission of sins to be saved. The Lord will add you to His church of which there's only one. You remain faithful to the end of your life, and you will either go to heaven or you will go to hell. That's right. Now, That's how in the we world do are we uh -huh. false teachers That's right. when we believe all the tenets of the church? And, and the plan is Here's the difference. Here's the difference. In the church, if someone said, I believe you go right to heaven or right to hell, 
that is an ignorant situation which everybody would uh, would tolerate and no one would withdraw from. That's right. We but, say our studied conclusion is yes. when you die, you go right to heaven or you go right to hell. Now you're Problems. a heretic. Now, we got now, 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 now you're promoting well, heretic. This That's an inconsistency. Moments. Let's watch this a few more moments and we'll open up some phone lines and deal with a few more We're things. Completely done. Completely done. So you can't even answer I a few questions. To answer. I, I, I thought, didn't Jesus say forgive seven times seventy? Sure. We're completely done. And we're asking him to engage in a Bible study. If he can show us where we're wrong, why would he be saying, I'd strike you blind? We're completely done. You're not my brother. Now, no wonder, no wonder the church is dying in Martinsville under this man, th this type of leadership. I've got to say it. I've got to say it. Well, I, uh, I, we I know that now. We're not trying to be mean or no. crass or rude, but at, listen, let the truth be known. Now, Johnny called me about six or seven months ago, and he said, why don't you get off of this? And what he means is get off of eschatology. Yeah. Get off what teaching the truth, what I believe the Bible to teach. I hadn't stopped doing anything that I was doing. As a matter of fact, I'm more zealous now in door knocking. I door yeah. knock every single week. Every, at least two to three times a week, I'm door knocking. I'm, try, I'm meeting people. I've got Bible studies going on right now. We, between the two of us, we had six baptisms this year. So far, yeah. We're, we're, we're yeah. just starting just since January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that the numbers make no, a difference, no. but we are not just doing this as a hobby. We're trying to evangelize. One of the exactly. reasons I want to evangelize, I was encouraged because of Johnny Robertson, and I don't think he's doing the kind of work that he used to do. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's all about the TV production now and not about the gospel. If you can't, and I, we were talking on the phone, and um, you know, he said, I said, well, Johnny used to follow up uh, your, your uh, television programs with Bible stuff. They used to get the names together. You know, somebody called in, they would follow sure. up. He said, I can't do that right now. You know, he's had cancer, and I hate that for him. Yeah. And I know that he's busy, and he's going to different places. But I'll tell you what, if I had so much TV work that I couldn't have a Bible study anymore with the individuals that were looking for the truth, I cut out some of my TV that's work. That's exactly right. That's and exactly yet, right. this is what he makes his his living on Well, right that's, that's his bread and butter, Hoger, like yeah. you said earlier. Yeah. Let's, let's watch just a few more minutes of this, and we'll open up some phone lines. We'll, we'll, we'll have a little bit more discussion here. And I want to talk about him debating this Muslim coming up as well. I'm basically, I've blocked y'all off my Facebook. I've withdrawn from y'all. Y'all are basically um, hominidus and violinists, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know what you're saying yet. Now, let's stop it right there. Now, he says we're Hymenaeus and Philetus because he knows the traditional position uses this argument against us. Here's the irony of this uh, uh, statement that Brother Johnny makes. He agreed with me on that. On 2 Timothy 2 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. You see, I, my position is if the resurrection meant the end of human history. In right. the geophysical world. And everybody then, physically rose from yeah. the graves. Then Hymenaeus and Philetus couldn't have influenced anyone. They certainly wouldn't have been worthy to put in holy writ as dangerous false teachers. Yeah. But what Hymenaeus and Philetus did, they put the resurrection before the fall of Jerusalem, therefore the fall before the fall of the Great Tribulation, arguing then for the Jewish system would continue. And that's heresy. That's but what right. the traditional position does is actually become guilty of Hymenaean heresy because the resurrection was to take place when Jerusalem fell. The Hadean world would be empty, proven by Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, verses 18 and 19, Matthew chapter 24, 31. We'll look at these texts later. Yes. So what Hymenaeus and Philetus did was simply to discount the great tribulation and the fall of Jerusalem, the continuing of the Jewish system. What the traditional position does is go beyond the very time that Jesus said resurrection would take place. In Matthew 24, 31, he would gather them from the east, the west, the north, and the south with his angels. I talked to one preacher. He said, well, that's the beginning of the gathering. No, that's the end of the gathering. There is the resurrection, and that's when resurrection took place. We affirm, and we can prove, that the resurrection out of the Hadean world took place when Jerusalem fell, proven by Daniel chapter 12, Luke 21. verse 2, Luke chapter 21, Matthew 24, sure. Revelation 11, Matthew 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19
uh, resurrection, fleshly resurrection, who would, if Hymenaeus and Philetus had came along and said, the resurrection's taken place already, and everybody in the first century thought it was a physical resurrection, they could have fooled nobody. That's right. All they would have had to do is look around and say, um, hello, we're all still here. A but simple the walk, truth is, right. a simple walk to the graveyard yeah. would have disproven it, right? The earth's not on fire would have proven it, right? Yeah, that's right. But the truth is, they were not looking for a physical resurrection in the first century like we are today. That's right. That's the truth. They knew that resurrection would take place when Jerusalem fell. Can we get to Daniel chapter 12? Yeah, but I want to hear him say we're going to call the police and we'll go right to it. Well, put that out. Let's, let's, let's get him some teaching now. We've, we've given enough well, one more time to John. Oh, let's let's actually, in 2 Timothy 2, 7, he says it right now in a second. He's doing us what the Baptists do to him. And that's fine. The Baptists are not in fellowship with me. Yeah, well, they're they're believers. Believers. According to you. They're non-believers. I am doing you different. He said we weren't brethren earlier. Yeah, and he said we're denominational people. Which is it? He says it right now. Boy, boy. So you studied this thing out, and you've already come to that conclusion. And I've already come to the conclusion. Already with both y'all, and I'm out of fellowship with you. Y'all are in fellowship with another group, and that's you know I'm happy with that. You did that I'm before. Happy. Listen, that's you right. You did that before that's anything right. was right known here. about anything. You said yes, you did. You you texted me first of all. Okay, now, I'm not having this discussion. You guys can take off. You, you don't want you don't, you don't want to discuss what's listen, happened, how this has gone down. You think I don't know how all this goes? I know how this goes. Uh -huh. if you've got, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time, and I'm basically going to call the police and say, you've got two guys up here. Oh, Johnny. Who could believe Johnny Robertson was going to call the police because we want to open our Bibles and have a study? I could. Holder couldn't believe it. I was halfway. My wife called it. My wife called it, Holder. Yeah, she was she, right. She was right. Holder wants to get to Daniel 12. He wants to do some teaching. we got 15 minutes. So yeah. Do you want to open up the phone lines, or do you want to hit Daniel 12? Well, let's hit Daniel 12. We'll open up the phone lines. Okay. Okay. Let, let's we'll, we'll right. go to Daniel chapter This 12 is a monumental a text, which gave me no little consternation. Now, the only thing that I ask for you all to be is to be honest with what you see in the text. Just to be honest. And I would say to, to Brother Johnny, is it hard for you to kick against the bricks? Because, in fact, when someone reads this text, he is now faced with the fact that the time of the resurrection would take place at the time of the trouble. Now let's read a few verses here. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a, a nation, even at that same time. Now Jesus will quote this text in Matthew 24, 21. That's right. And he had it referencing to the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Now notice what he says in verse 1 in the latter part of the verse. At that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Here is the book of life. Yes, Revelation Here is That's exactly right, Revelation chapter 20. The deliverance would come at that time. Now, and, all right, we have the conjunction back to the time of verse 1. Daniel is not going now to the future for 2,000 years. He's talking about that same time. For he says in verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now this is the only text in the Old Testament where both classes of just and unjust are mentioned in the same verse. This cannot be a resurrection of a cause, lest God also resurrect the wicked along with the righteous. Here is the resurrection Sorry. text that Jesus quotes from in John 5, 28 and 29, which would take place at the last day of the Jewish age, That's right. not the last day of the Christian Jesus age. Jesus was born in the Jewish age, Galatians That's 4, 4. He came to the, uh, the lost tribe of Israel. He didn't go to the Gentile world. They were in the age of the Mosaic dispensation. Absolutely. Let's go on and just read a few verses here. Verse 3 now. Uh... And they shall be wise, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now Jesus quotes this text in Matthew 13, 43, referencing the end of the age. Yeah, All right? the text. Now look at verse 4. But thou, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. The Bible never speaks about the end of time. It speaks about the time of the end. And what was the time of the end? It was the time of the end where the abomination, which would make desolate. 
Now look at, again in verse 9. Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. He's talking about that same end. That end where there would be a last day. Now look at verse 11. And from that time the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. That's the times, times and a half a time, the three and a half years of the great tribulation period before the resurrection. Now please notice verse 13 of Daniel 12. But go thy way till the end be. Now notice what he tells Daniel. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. The time of the end brought forth that last day. Daniel would receive his resurrection. He would stand. New, New American Standard Version says, Stand or rise again at the end of the of the days. When the desolation would come, which is what Jesus would cite in uh, Matthew chapter 24, referring to the desolation that Daniel spoke about that's exactly right. in, regarding the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the Mosaic age. That's right. Matthew uh, 24, 15 is a good reference for that. Now, let's look at Matthew 24 to verse 31. Everyone agrees that everything before verse 34 would happen in that generation. A generation is 40 years according to Hebrews chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. The last generation, that last day period, and that's what the last days have reference to, was spoken by Moses in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 20. But now notice what Jesus said in verse 31 of Matthew 24. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There's the last trump. Here's the trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Here, in fact, is the resurrection. That's right. That's the standing of Daniel. Daniel 12, Absolutely. 13. He would stand in his lot at the end of the day. That's the resurrection of Daniel 12, too, the just and that's the unjust. Right. That's right. And that's exactly what the book of Revelation teaches in Revelation chapter 11. And Listen, Holger... Right, uh, Matthew 24, 34. This, yeah, this generation, generation shall not, not pass, pass that's right. till all these things be fulfilled, but my brethren refused to believe Jesus Christ. And John is going to get a spanking from the Muslim if the Muslim knows the New Testament at all. Because that Muslim is going to hold Johnny accountable to these verses and say if Jesus didn't fulfill this, then he's not the Messiah and Johnny can't reason yeah. through it with him yeah. no better than he couldn't reason with, uh, yeah, that's through right. us. That's right. The, we skeptics, the, the skeptics and the Muslims know that Jesus promised to return within that generation. They said, well, he didn't. Therefore, he's not the Messiah. He's not the Son of the living God. Let me give just a quick lesson on the revelation, okay? The revelation, the revealing of Christ, is the Greek word apocalypsis, all right? We get our transliterated English term, apocalypse, from this term. The great revealing of Christ took place when John, as John wrote, within the framework of the first century, because in Revelation 1.1, the Bible says it would shortly come to pass. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, the time was at hand. And just so we wouldn't misunderstand, in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 10, the time was at hand. In Revelation 22 and verse 6, he would, these things would shortly come to pass. And Jesus said, I come quickly. Now let me give you the traditional argument on Jesus coming quickly. When he comes, he's going to come fast. Uh, no. You know, that's like saying, okay, your, your house is on fire, you're calling the police department or the fire department, and they answered the phone and they said, we're coming quickly, and they come 10, mile, uh, 10 years later, but when they come, they come 95 miles an hour right. rolling down the road. That's let, ridiculous. Let, 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 me, let me throw Matthew 5, 17 and 18 up there. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now listen to this carefully, friends. Listen to this. This is Jesus' words. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not uh, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, if heaven and earth has a pass, it's the physical heaven and earth, and that's the heaven and earth Jesus was referencing there, then we're still under every jot and tittle of the Old Testament law. We best start planning our trips to the doing the feast days in Jerusalem. We better start sending our tithes over there. We better start proselyting and making our animal say, sacrifices. Johnny once taught, when we, and Johnny and I were good friends, but Johnny asked me on the phone a couple of years ago, Hover, why do we keep hitting ourselves on Matthew 5, 17, and 18? 
He knew it didn't work in the traditional position. Because, right. in fact, the law wasn't done away at the cross. Right. The law was done away by means of the cross. Right. The Bible says, That which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Hebrews 8, 30, 1, 8, can we Can we get to Revelation 11 real quick? Uh, we got about seven minutes. I can't believe nobody's called, to be yeah. honest with you. Okay. Maybe, maybe nobody All right. cares. All but, right. uh, Let's look at Revelation chapter 11. And we find the same motif of Luke chapter 21. We find the time of the Gentiles, okay, and the temple which is measured. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, the temple that's being measured and the 42 months of the Gentiles trotting underfoot this great city is identified in verse 8 of Revelation chapter 11. For the Bible says their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. So, this of course is Jerusalem. It is the Sodom uh, uh, prediction that Moses said that they would become like Sodom in their last days. Well, this is the last days of the house of Israel. Right. All right? Now, we find that in this context, verse 14 says the second woe is past. Behold, the th a third woe comes quickly, and the seventh angel sounded. There's only seven angels. This is the last trump. This is Matthew 24 and verse 31. And this is when the kingdom of God completely comes to the world. Hello, caller. You're on live with Stephen Hoger. Yes, sir. Go ahead. If, there, if there's a delay, you're going to have to turn off your television. Turn your television off so you can speak with us on the phone, okay? Okay. Thank you. And then go ahead. Proceed. <laughs> Let me just answer this so that Johnny and I were good friends. He's called us false teachers. He says we are lost and we are condemned, and he needs to withdraw fellowship from us and tell the whole world that we're heretics and we're lost and we're condemned, and, and we just simply want to uh, have a discussion with him, see if he can prove it, and if he can, somebody's got some repenting to do. Yeah. Uh, we, we're, very, uh, we're very upset with our brothers in the church, but rather than uh, study with us and at least see the wonder of this teaching. It's unifying. There's nothing to be afraid of. As a matter of fact, the traditional position is liberal. It right. is. It's liberal. Right. It's loose with Scripture. Right. We put the framework of the last days when it belongs. The last days of the house of Israel. Right. Johnny has actually gone out publicly and said that we're false teachers yes. and that we're heretical. He's caused division. When the Lord prayed, there'd be no division. When the Bible teaches that let there be no divisions among us, and we we went down there to try to regain unity, and he would not. And that's, uh, you know, he caused the division. People are saying Hogan and I are causing the trouble. No. no, we're teaching God's truths, and if somebody can prove us wrong, we welcome their calls. Look, right. Johnny can call us right now. Thank you for the call. By yeah, the way. that's right. Now Johnny Robertson said that why would he debate me? I'm no power in the brotherhood. Probably he's right. I'm not a power at all. Caller, did you have any other? I'm sorry, Hogan. Did you have any other questions, caller? Okay. But I don't understand. Okay. He, okay, he comes on TV, and he comes on TV. Right. Main thing that he makes the picture of as he goes to these churches. That's right. He does the same thing to others that we did to him. Right. And he complains about them. That's right. And at the same time says that he's doing against, he, he, he's treating us scripturally. That Baptist church called the police on Micah. Micah had all kinds of trouble with it. Yeah, Johnny did nothing but, but run, ramrod that church for doing such a thing. Johnny, he, all we want to do is talk about the Bible. They had to call the police. And now here, all we want to do is talk about the Bible. And he call says, I'm going to call the police. Right. police. Right. 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 Thank you for the call, Taller. We appreciate the call. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Now, Johnny said, why would he debate me because I was no power in the brotherhood? That well may be, but I can handle Johnny Robertson any day of the week, and I can handle Johnny Robertson on eschatology. And as a matter of fact, if he would call, we could get into a discussion. We would know exactly who knows what. Hello, on caller. Eschatology. You're on there live with Stephen Hoger. Can you turn your television down while you're speaking with us, please? Yeah, it is. Okay, go ahead, caller. What's your first name? Yeah. 
Hey, uh, welcome to the program. Go ahead with your question or your comment. Yeah, my comment is, uh, I think Johnny's become puffed up and arrogant, and he's not willing to contend for the faith. Uh, Apostle Paul contended for the faith daily in the synagogue. Amen. He's not even willing to debate you. That's right. That's right. And, and, and But he, he, he runs around all over the country chiding the denominations for doing that to him, right? That's right. And, and so now, all of a sudden, the roles are reversed. Johnny's running. Uh, you know, I, I, I promise I wouldn't use a certain word, but he is not being consistent uh, with this with this truth, that's for sure, with this situation. Uh, he's being inconsistent. Appreciate the call. Thank you so very much. Yep. Okay, have a nice um, day. Again, again, Brother Johnny says, I'm no power in the brotherhood. Perhaps so. Hope maybe I'm maybe I'm no one. We may be off. It's about right now time. Let's give our phone numbers. If anybody wants to call, contact us. The hour went by so fast. Hover's number is 269-325-4449. And mine is 231-425-6044. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you uh, watching. We hope we've sparred some uh, some interest. We're going to be on next Sunday night. Right. Same time, same place. You be there. And you Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I was just going to say that I appreciate your show. Thanks for doing it. I think it's high time somebody did come in and uh, get things straightened out. And I just wondered, is there any way I can get in touch with all uh, say tomorrow uh, off air? Yes, sir. Uh, let me give you uh, our cell phone number. You want yours or mine? Yeah. Uh, you can reach us at uh, 269 325 Four 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 nine. That's Hoger Newbauer's phone number. Four 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 nine. Yeah, two six nine three two five four 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 nine. Okay, I should have thanked and I'll be calling you and that'd be fine. We appreciate the call. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Hope I, I believe we're off air down there. Uh, the, the hour went fast. I think we're just starting to warm up. One hour is just not enough time. Yeah. It's not. We're still going live on the internet. I don't know if there's folks on the inter, uh, folks on the internet that are watching. Uh, let's say this. Call, well, let, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. You're on live with Stephen Hope. Yes. Hello. I've been uh, listening to you, and uh, when Johnny first came on, I thought he was a great man. And uh, I've been listening said, good, great question, excellent way. question. Yes, Jesus sir. said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yeah, believest thou this. So now, Jesus promised that if we would live and believe in him, of course, those are baptized believers, those in the kingdom of God, they would never die spiritually. Now, right. if, that, if that's the case, why would we need a physical resurrection in order to get to heaven when Jesus promised if we would live and believe in him we would never die. So if we will live and believe and abide in Christ, become Christians, be faithful, our reward, our eternal inheritance is heaven. It is heaven. It's not see the Hadean world, but the Church of Christ teaches you go yeah. to the Hadean world, Hadean world which is yeah. uh sort something sort of similar to purgatory with the Catholic religion. Along those same lines you go to a place of waiting the final judgment and uh and so uh, that has been completed. That's already happened. Now we either go straight to heaven or straight to that uh, place known as hell. Well, now, uh, from what I understand in the Bible of reading, and of course I'm not any magic sword shoot people uh, 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 for understanding the Bible, but my understanding is this, that uh, death is, in my opinion, paradise. Because you know nothing, no tears, no souls, no remembrance, no nothing. And then when Jesus comes back, uh, he'll raise his uh, uh, children or his followers. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that is the traditional position, what you just said. And However, we find that that second coming of Christ, and this is where we want to challenge the traditional position. Yes. 
In James chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says, The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So it was near when James wrote. It was at hand then. In the Hebrew letter, he said he was coming in a very little while. And the great coming in the book of Revelation was at hand when John wrote. So we see that great coming as a spiritual concept. When Jerusalem fell, that's when the resurrection out of Hades took place. So that you and I don't have to go to Hades anymore. We believe that Hades is destroyed by Jesus. Right. And, and judgment came. We, and we, there was a realized sense of salvation at that time. And when the judgment had taken place throughout all of the world, the gospel had been taken. And we appreciate the call. We're, we're at vastly out of time. Um, take down our phone number. Give us a call tomorrow. And we'll, we'll be able to go through this in great detail with you. And uh, let's go on and see if we can find another caller. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Hogla, I don't know if we're still on. Uh, let's give it just a, a we'll, we'll see. Any other callers? Well, um, we're here. You can reach us at um, 231, if I can get the computer to work here a little bit better, 843-4472. And I think we're off down there on uh, Star News. But I'll tell you what, Hoger, I certainly appreciate you. I certainly appreciate your helping me to understand this thing better. I appreciate, what I really appreciate, is people who are going to be honest with Jesus. Yeah. And they're going to trust what Jesus says in Luke 21, Matthew 5, Matthew 16, the book of Revelation. Jesus is giving the revelation to John. John is talking about the Olivet Discourse. That is John's Olivet Discourse, the book of Revelation. That's exactly right. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, one more time, uh, I'm getting, uh, I keep getting text messages and, and, and messages here. Let me see here. Uh, this says that we're still on down on WGSR TV down there. Uh, is that right? That's what this. That's what Amanda. Let me say this. Said. You know, um, Caleb said on the hour before us that we just have to be honest intellectually. Amen. That's, that's what we're exactly saying. Exactly what he did say, and yeah. you you said that. Why can't they do that? Yeah. Why can't they do that? Uh, hello, caller. You're on live with Stephen Hogue. Hey, Steve. This is Tim. How are you doing? Good, Tim. How are you doing today? That's right, 2,000 years ago. Appreciate the call, Tim. I, I think, and, and little children can even understand it. That's a good call. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yep, you, you too. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, friends. Uh, I got a, a text a message a few minutes ago. We're still on. I don't know if they're keeping us on now or not. I tell you what, I would like to have over. I'd like if we're still on down there. Why doesn't Micah? Why doesn't Mark McManus? Why doesn't the preacher who doesn't want us to mention his name that comes on every Thursday at 8 p.m. with the Church of Christ, Johnny Robertson's cousin, call us? Why doesn't Johnny Robertson call us? That's my question. Why won't they deal with us like brethren? Admonish us as a brother. If any man see a brother that's in error, let him know that knows that he that uh, uh, saves a brother from the error of his Here, way. Here's shall the thing. Here's, here's the thing sense. with Johnny. He, his argument is because we're withdrawn from, he doesn't deal with us at all. However, 
he never made one argument before I was withdrawn from and, against my position. And even if we were withdrawn oh, from, Roger, Matthew 18, Jesus said, Let them who have been withdrawn from be unto you as the heathen and the publicans. And in Matthew chapter 9, verse 10, yeah. Jesus sat down to eat with the publicans to teach them better and show them better. He was criticized by the Pharisees, yes. but he was there as that's a doctor right. healing them. Let them deal with that. Let yeah, them deal sure. with, with giving sure. answer to every man that asketh them a hope yeah. that lies within them with meekness and joy. Uh, uh, me, uh, fear and fear. Thank you. I'm getting another text here. Uh, you're on, and I'll, I'll let you know when you're off. So, all right. Well, as long as WGSR is going to keep us on, we're going to stay on. Let's keep going, Hope. What do you say? Okay. Let's, um, can we, uh, Kurt, bring bring back up the um, the, the the program? Amanda said she's going to text me when we're off on WGSR. I want Johnny Robertson to call us. I want Caleb or Micah or Mark or the man who doesn't want to be named who comes out Thursday night at 8 o'clock, let them give answer. Let them deal with this. Let them prove all things. If they want to withdraw from us, listen. Blocking us on Facebook, over and running from us, calling the law, or like little the girls, law. if yeah. I can say it that way, yeah. threatening to call the police, because all we want to do is reason together. Hey, look, I'm not an unreasonable man. I changed from what Johnny Robertson now believes to what I believe now because I only want to be honest. I'm going to take Jesus at face value. Mm -hmm. you, 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 want, you got something there, Hogan? Yeah. You want me to bring up something? Well, here is one of the traditional arguments is that there is a division in Matthew 24 and verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Most brethren believe that the coming before verse 34 was the coming in Jerusalem, and after verse uh, 36, that's the final coming where the end of human history is concerned. But what Jesus is doing is quoting from Zechariah 14 in verse 7, where the Bible says it was shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And he says in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Now what he's saying is it's a day like no other, a day known only to the Lord. Now Jesus is saying here are the general signs giving up to that time without knowing the day and the hour. But he says it's going to be like the days of Noah. Now the traditional position says that the final coming of Christ has no signs. And yet Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37 it's going to be like the days of Noah. And he says in verse 38, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now I want you to think for a moment. Was not the ark a great sign? It was a sign that the unbelievers rejected. But the believers knew, Noah and his family knew, that that was God's sign that there was a flood coming. That's what Jesus means. Exactly. We're going to have the unbelievers rejecting the sign. Here are the signs that you should be looking for. Now, in verse 37 of Matthew 24, we find Jesus said that the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. The Greek is the parousia. Okay? Right. Now, earlier in verse 27, we find, As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, even so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It's the same sermon, same subject, same coming. It's right. the, there's only one, the parousia. It relates the to the, the same question that the disciples sure. asked in verse 23 sure. of Matthew 21. Tell us what, what shall the times of thy uh, signs of thy coming be? When shall these things come to pass? And when will be the end of the age? Right. Friends, they were living in the Mosaic age. They were looking for the end of that age, not the end of the physical planet. And Jesus is answering that all through Matthew 24 and 25. He's not right. talking about the end of a physical, literal planet. In fact. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21, that be glory be given to Jesus Christ in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Ephesians 3, 21. Let Johnny Robertson deal with some of these passages. In fact, I'd like to go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 and 28. Look what Jesus says here when he says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Every man according to his works. 
whether it be good or evil, every man. This is the resurrection of the just and the unjust. This is the coming of the Son of Man and the glory of His Father with the angels. And look what he says in the next verse. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till you see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Friends, Jesus said that 2,000 years ago. He, looking at His disciples, said to them, there shall be some of you which are standing here, that you will not die till you see me coming in my kingdom for this judgment. That's what he is talking about here. He goes into it in Matthew chapter 12, talking about this. Let's stop right here. Now, the traditional position, Steve, yes, go ahead, puts Rod. a big distinction. They're going to say verse 27 is going to be the end of the physical world and human history. They're going to say verse 28 is Pentecost. They are neither. That's this right. is the judgment passage. And they would not die until they saw him coming in his kingdom. To reward every man Absolutely. according to his works. There should be some of you that stand here that shall not taste it. By the way, that's corroborated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Right. Well, what is it? Verse 52, 51, 52, 53. There where the apostle Paul said that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Right. The apostle Paul said... We're not all going to die until the resurrection comes. That's what the Lord said in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, 28. When the resurrection comes, it's going to be, while some of you which are standing here shall not taste of death till you see me coming in my kingdom. Now, all we would ask is everyone to simply just take maybe a little bit of a breath and read these verses. That's right. And just see how naturally they fit together. That they understood that Jesus was returning within their generation. And in fact, all of the coming passages refer to the same coming. Now, we make the argument that in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, where the Bible says, upon the first day of the week the disciples came together to break bread, that because we have the time indicator, we don't have to guess about that in 1 Corinthians 11, because the Lord already told us the time indicator. The time is given. There's only one second coming. That's right. And the time indicator was the first century. Now, Jesus said he was coming with the trumpet of God. Right. He said he was coming in judgment to gather together the elect from the four right. winds of the earth, right? From the, he said he was coming in the clouds, said he was coming with his angels, coming, coming in the glory of the Father. When he was coming to judge and destroy Jerusalem, Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31, he said he's coming in those things at that right. time. Right. This generation shall not pass till all these things shall not cease till all these things come to pass. That would be his second coming, Holger. Yes. There is no third, third coming. coming of now. Now, how did right. some preachers say this? Right. Well, that was just sort of a figurative, symbolic, judgmental. They they use all these words to describe it. But it was his coming. It was his second coming. I right. I asked one, and you you gave this to me. I said, what was the coming in Jerusalem? Was it a one and a half coming? Yeah, was it a one point three coming? <laughs> What, what was it? It was his second coming. Right. He shall appear a second time without now, sin unto salvation. Now the, ar the argument that, that the, tradition, uh, the traditional position puts forward, that in Matthew 24, the first 34 verses uh, refer to Jesus coming to Jerusalem. Yet the more regal, the more kingly, the more profound language concerning the coming is in the first part of the chapter, right. not the second. Right. And so we're going to argue that how could the less important coming, according to the traditional view, have the greater, more regal language attached to it? And so we see one great coming. And by the way, in Matthew chapter 24, the second coming, even by the traditional position, is set forth to be like a thief. Mm -hmm. He would come like a thief. Right. Matthew 24, 42, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And he said, uh, for uh, that if the good man of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. And so the argument goes like this. When Jesus comes back the final time, he'll come back as a thief. And as he, come back, he comes back as a thief, there will be no signs. Listen, the book of Revelation is the most sign-filled book of the New Testament. And yet in Revelation 16, 15, he was coming as, as a thief, you see. So that's the same coming. God is not trying to confuse us. Jesus is not confusing us. And it's just what did he say about his coming, Ogre, in Revelation 22 there in Revelation? He was coming quickly. 
And his coming was at hand. That's right. Even yeah. so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Right. Right? That's exactly right. Exactly correct. So he was coming as a thief. His coming was to shortly come to pass. His coming was uh, uh, at hand. Um, uh, yeah, we're still, I don't know. I, if they're charging us right now, I can't help but We agree to one hour. So okay. if they're giving us this, okay. then, then that's good. Let's, let's, <laughs> that, that's where I'm at. With it. Let's, yeah. uh, 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 Kurt, bring up the, the computer screen again. Watch this. Discussion. You guys can take off. You don't want to, you don't want to discuss what's this happened and how this has gone this, down. You think I don't know how all this goes? I know how this goes. Uh -huh. I, you've got, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time. And I'm By the way, stop it right there. Stop right there. Two guys up here. When oh, John was on the phone with me, he said, listen, he knows all about cameras and uh, pen pocket cameras, and he's the master of the game. Well, they got buckle we're, buckle cameras. We're, we're not in a game. That's I, we didn't come trying to trick anybody or demonstrate we can Open manipulate circumstances more yeah, than him. We were interested in the truth. We're still interested in the truth. I'll debate Johnny Robertson any day of the week. Okay, yeah, then we certainly will. Uh, Amanda just sent me a text and we're still on. So she's watching Star News. I, now, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, let, let me, um, go ahead, Hoger, you want to you yeah. keep going? Yeah, I, I, we'll let me, go. Let me check something. You know, we, we paid for one hour. We're not going to pay for uh, hours. No, I but guess. if they want to give us some time, we'll certainly take it. Let, let, yeah. Let's go right out through this. I was going to yeah. go to Matthew 12. You, you know, you know, go to Luke 21 and show them some of that okay. stuff if you All like. Right. Um, Luke 21, I would now, say. Now, let me make one, one point here, too, about Matthew chapter 24, before we go, all right? And Jesus said that his coming would be like the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west. Okay? That's Matthew 24, 27. That's the same language of Luke 17 and Luke chapter 21, uh, 27. That's true of a land, but not of a globe. The coming would be vast, as you see from the east to the west. And the Bible uses the imagery, this is Hebrew judgment language, because he would be coming in the clouds. As you look to the uh, horizon and you see dark clouds gathering, you know a storm is brewing. That's Hebrew judgment language. In Isaiah 19, verse 1, the Lord was riding on a swift cloud, yet he was coming through Sargon of Assyria. In Isaiah 21, 1 through 5. So since Jesus is a Jewish prophet, using Jewish language, and by the way, all the New Testament scriptures are Jewish, we should go back to the Old Testament and to see the language that was used by the prophets. It wasn't end of planet language, it was the end of nation language, and that is consistent throughout the New Testament that right. Jesus was coming right. to end the Old Covenant world and the Old Covenant uh, uh, itself. Exactly right. Now let me let me say this, Holger. We are not on Star News. Okay. Amanda must be watching us on our Ustream channel. Okay. We're not on Star News, uh, okay. so that is ended. For those of you who have stayed tuned in to the internet, we appreciate it. Uh, we're going to end the program now. Uh, our phone numbers are mine is area code two three one four two five six zero four four, and Holger's is two six nine. Uh, three two five four 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 nine. We appreciate you tuning in. We thank you. We're going to catch you next week at the same time. Y'all have a good night. Let's see what Amanda's saying here. Uh, you're off of TV on Ustream still. Okay. Well, Love we can go to we can Ustream all night. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're all set then, and uh, we are off on WGSR, and I just got word that we've been off on there for about 16 minutes, which is probably why the phone stopped ringing. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So, um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna log off the internet right now. Let me let me get that turned off, and uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. A lot more there. <laughs> all right, that's all right. It's Good the job, truth. Good job. It's the truth, man. So let's get that taken care of, and that. Gets